the new 74 series NAS. Um, this is made up of three separate NAS. So we've got the uh, four bay, six bay, and eight bay that you can see on screen there. Uh, we'll move straight into a little bit more detail about them. Um, so here's the uh, the different options. So the six bay is offered with uh, two CPU options. You can have an i3 or an i5. Uh, the eight bay, which I'm going to demo here for you today, um, does have an i5, and we in the four bay we do have a Pentium. These are all powered by the latest Intel 12th gen uh, CPUs, um, so they're much faster than the previous series that these are replacing, which is the 72 series. Um, so all of them have um, um, extra extra threads on top of the cores. So you've got so on the eight bay I'll be demonstrating today. You've got a six core 12 thread um, which also matches the highest spec version in the uh, in the six bay uh, the alternative i3 option is a four core eight thread um, and with the Pentium it's a two core four thread um, each of them it comes with different uh, levels of RAM starting at 8 gig all the way up to 32 gig is the base RAM um, but you are able to take them all the way up um, to 128 gig if you wish as well um, so you can have different operating systems on the NAS, um, so it is shipped as standard with QUTS Hero, um, but if you want to, one of the first questions you get asked during the setup wizard, which I'll demo later, is um, the option to switch to QTS, so you get the option at the bottom there, uh, which would allow you to switch if you wanted to. Um, so the detailed uh, CPU specs are here for anybody that wants to pause to find out more. Um, that's, uh, that's all the information we've got for you there. When we move on to the built-in GPU, so depending on uh, the version that you get, depending on the CPU, depends how many execution units that the onboard um, Intel graphics has. Um, so starting with the Pentium, it can get um, up to 16 execution units. The i3 will be 24, um, and the uh, top level i5 will give you 32. Um, so we've integrated this with um, our AI application and, and other features that and other applications that we've got to, to make use of these. Um, of course, something like Plex, if you were using it for transcoding, would also uh, be able to benefit uh, from using these as well. Um, now just to, to move on to looking at the uh, units themselves, so you've got um, all three units basically look the same from the front, they've just got uh, varying levels of drive base. Um, so they all have a USB 3.1 Gen 2 um, port on the front, so a 10 gig uh, USB port. Um, nice LCD display and all the drive bays will work with three and a half inch or two and a half inch SATA drives and they are lockable and we give you the keys with it as well. Uh, here's a rear view of the six bay and eight bay uh, so you can see the six bay at the top right um, very similar to each other so you've got a HDMI output two uh, 2.5 gig LAN ports um, another uh, uh, set of uh, USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports at the back, so you've got uh, two 10 gig ports, one's a Type A, one's a Type C. Um, and one of the best things is at the top left, you've got uh, PCIe Gen 4, so that's one Gen 4 by 16 slot um, and one Gen 4 by 4 slot. If we move on to the 4-bay, um, so a bit more compact here, um, largely the same ports uh, uh, on offer and you've also got the same uh, Gen 4 by 16 main slot but a slightly slower um, second slot on this one just because the, the Pentium doesn't have as many PCIe lanes for us to offer so we've had to restrict that one down. If you look at the internal view, so the internal view here of the 4-bay it's exactly the same as when you look at the uh, the other one. So when I switch the slide to the uh, the eight bays and the six bays, the only thing that's going to change is the speed of the M.2 slots at the bottom left. So the onboard M.2s for the four bay, a Gen 3 by two, still nice and fast. But when you go up to the uh, the, the six bay and the eight bay, it's Gen 4 by four slots. Uh, so much much faster um, capabilities from the M.2 slots um, with the with the faster CPUs. Um, you can also use um, different levels of RAM, so this is just letting you know you can have 128 gig maximum, that's two 64 gig chips. Um, while we don't ship it with any ECC RAM on any of the models we, pro we provide, um, if you wanted to use ECC, it is supported so you can use them in there. Um, the only thing I will note is that you should not install ECC and non-ECC on the same NAS at the same time. You should either use all ECC or all non-ECC. Um, so with the two PCIe ports, especially with one of them being a much faster port, you are able to use um, 
much fancier graphics card so if you wanted to put in a nice Nvidia graphics card something like that uh, we do support the dual width cards so long as it doesn't need an extra power pin on it and um, we do support the dual width um, uh, graphics cards so we do have a list on our website on the uh, compatibility list of all the different GPUs on offer um, so here's some performance information so with this test we did put a 25 gig card in which is an optional extra that you can buy the part numbers up there at the top right if you wanted to get this card yourself um, but we're able to get um, basically on the the read speeds 2875 megabytes a second with a 2149 megabytes a second on the write speed um, so you can see down here the full test environment if anybody wants more information there you can you can pause the video and have a read of that um, and here's the uh, performance with the 6 bay and again here's the performance with the 4 bay so the 4 bay is obviously not as fast because it is just a Pentium chip inside there um, and it has less drive base um, so we can't have as many SSDs to do the test with uh, but uh, it's still very very respectable performance with that 25 gig card in there uh, just a bit more information about the uh, the GPUs that are supported. Again, for a full list, go to the compatibility list to find out what it uh, what uh, cards are supported. Uh, so we've got a few popular applications there on the right hand side where you can use those GPUs to pass the GPU through to say a VM, a container, something like that. Um, of course, one of the more popular uses within our range is to use them with Plex. So we'll do a video a bit later on, um, a subsequent video that will be uh, this very same NAS that I'm going to demo for you with a GPU added in as well. Uh, a quick comparison between um, the, the four models on option, uh, uh, sorry, on offer. So you can see all the different information there. So again, they all do have QUTS Hero installed as default. Uh, and you can optionally switch to QTS if you'd rather and you can see just a few of the differences there that the 4bay just does have some slower PCIe slots um, but it also has slower M.2 slots um, and the graphics isn't um, uh, doesn't have as many execution units um, as some of the uh, the i3 or i5 options uh, just one of the last points here, um, we do uh, cover this unit with a standard 3 year warranty, no extra cost for that up from the two years of previous models, um, but you can also uh, purchase a warranty extension as well if you want to so that you can get two additional years on that to take you up to a total of a five year warranty if you need it. Uh, so now we'll move straight into the, the demo of the unit. So here's the TVS H874 that I've got. And as you saw in the slides before, uh, you can see the option to just go straight ahead and start the installation of QUTS Hero. Um, or you can switch to QTS if you wish. Um, you can make this decision at any time, but anybody switching between Hero and QTS, uh, you will have to get your data off first. There's no way to keep the data on the drives intact during the swap. Uh, so you'd have to back up your data off the NAS, um, do the swap, and then copy it back. I'm going to keep this one on QUTS Hero for this one, so we'll go right through the full setup wizard all the way to the end, and we'll skip the bits where we have to do some waiting. So I'm going to click the, blue, click the blue button there to uh, start the installation. Um, here it's just asking, this is my current firmware version. I can click check for update. And so long as your NAS is online, it's going to be able to go off and see if there is a new firmware update. I'm already on the latest here, so I'll just click next. Uh, so now it wants you to do NAS name and passwords, things like that. So I'll just call it the, uh, the NAS model number itself. So nice and boring. Uh, we'll put the uh, username, just Craig. I'll type in a password that I want to use. So happy with that. Not going to save it. Um, so here's just asking for the uh, NTP server. So I'm going to leave it on default. Just leave it with the default one that's there. Click next. Now here you could set a, uh, a static IP address if you want. So I could come in here and give it a, a nicer IP address if I want to. Set the uh, DNS server that I need to use. Uh, don't need a secondary so I'll just put zeros there so here I can create the IP address on 10 10 20 20 rather than on obtain if I want so currently it's on 10 10 0 2 1 8 I want to switch to, to a different one so we'll, we'll say okay to that quick summary of everything that we're doing and I can just click apply and um, this is letting you know that if you do have any data on the drives this process is going to erase them so I'm happy to do that uh, so now while it's doing this, I'll just go quiet so we can fast forward this bit and I'll uh, uh, come back to you when we get to the, the part where we're actually going to click into the OS and log in for the first time.
Okay, so a few minutes later, that's the uh, NAS setup and the initial setup wizard um, of the uh, the operating system. Um, so here we've got an option to go to the NAS management, and while it's giving me this information on the uh, IP address we set it up, if you remember in the setup wizard there, we did uh, change the IP address. So if I hover over the uh, go to NAS management, we can see at the bottom left of the web browser there, um, it's going to take me to the new IP address um, that I typed in. So when I do that, we'll see it's gone to 10.10.2020. 10, um, so anybody that does want to set a static IP address at this stage, that's how that works. Uh, so here I'm going to log in with the information we used um, on the initial setup wizard. Uh, so we're fine with that. Not going to save the password. And we're going to get a few pop-ups of different things to do here. Um, so I don't need to do that. So I can go through. I'm not going to do the uh, data collection agreement. Um, got just a few different uh, options popping up down the right. We'll come to those in a minute. Um, so just to give you an overview of how I've got this unit set up at the moment, if I go look at the disks, uh, we can see I've got some WD Red SN700, a couple of the 500 gig SSDs in at the moment. Um, and in the main drive bays, I've got some uh, WD Red Pro uh, 20 terabyte drives. Um, so I've got four of those in at the moment. And I've got some free bays uh, to do with something else if I want to later on. Uh, so here I'm going to go down to the uh, storage slash snapshots option and get my first storage pool created. Uh, now the best thing to do here with QUTS Hero, which is what I'm running on this one, is to put this on the SSDs. So I'm going to open up a new storage pool. It's just letting you know what this is. Click next. And you can see that tip at the bottom as well. Select SSDs to imp improve performance of the system pool. So the first pool you create will be the system pool. Uh, so I'm going to tick the first two. I'm going to leave it on the RAID 1 that it's suggesting uh, for those two. And then I'm going to click next. Um, I do want it to do the optimized performance. Um, with these SSDs, I'm not going to use pool over provisioning. They're pretty good. Um, pool guaranteed snapshot space for the demo. I'm not going to do snapshots. Um, and I like to turn off the alert threshold on the pool. I prefer it on the volumes, but you can do whatever you want to on that one. Uh, so I'm going to click next. Now the optimized performance will take a while. It's going to give us a warning about that in a minute. So I'll go quiet again while it does that. Uh, so just a summary of everything we've selected there. And then we can click create. Uh, warning everything's going to be erased on those two disks I selected. That's okay. And here's the warning just telling you that optimiz optimizing the pool is going to take a little while. Um, uh, do I still want to continue? I'm going to say okay to that. Um, so after it creates the uh, the, the, the pool, um, it's going to then go on to optimize the performance. And after that, it's going to get everything ready. So we can see it says creating at the moment. We'll only do that for a second. And now it's gone straight into the optimizing. Um, so this is going to take a little while. I'll come back when that's finished and everything says ready. Okay, so we can see that it's almost ready now. So it's created the first shared folder, uh, which is the default public one. Um, and after it's done that, the uh, status type of the storage pool itself will change to ready as well. Uh, we can look through some of the other things that have popped up here. So these are some messages. We can look here at the uh, more detail at them um, on the notice board. Uh, so in the notice board, we can see a three step get started process. Um, some of them are obviously done, so we'll get a tick here on the uh, top one in a moment because we have created a storage space with the first pool, uh, which we can see has bracket system after it. So the first one you create is always the system pool. Uh, you can then add your QNAP ID or QID if, ID if you want to. You can set security policies for certain things like minimum password length, do passwords expire, things like that. Um, so I'll just close that for now because we're not going to go through all of those in this video. Um, help Center, just letting you know that there's a Help Center valuable resource if you want some information or help with the NAS. Um, malware Remover has been installed by default, so it's already done its first scan, everything's good there. Um, you can enable two-step verification if you want some more security, I'll skip that for now. Uh, you can do the multimedia playback and things in our, in our multimedia um, applications on the NAS if you want to. And it's also letting me know um, that the uh, the the, there's an update available in the App Center, so if you click that it will take you straight over to the App Center. We can see the Help Desk app as an update, and we can just click OK, and then we can dismiss that message that's left down here at the bottom. Um, so that will only take a second to update, so we're going to get an update that it's downloading, that it's updating, and that it's fully installed and ready to go as well. 
Um, so that's really most of the steps to getting the NAS up and running, but because we only created uh, the storage pool on the SSDs, uh, we do still have the uh, the hard drives available for whatever else we'd want to do. Um, so we could create that as a, uh, as a large volume. So here if I was to go create a new storage pool, we can see that the uh, the four disks uh, are still free, so those 20 terabyte disks. So if I tick all of those, it's going to select RAID 5 as the default. Click Next. Um, again, don't need to have the over provisioning or anything like this for this video. Um, so click Next and click Create. The same two warnings that we got before. Um, now I'm not going to sit through the uh, the optimizing performance for the hard drive volume, but that's it. It's creating a, a 52 terabyte uh, volume on those drives. Um, that I'll be able to use um, for whatever data I have on the NAS. Uh, so hopefully um, that was some, some good information for anybody uh, thinking of getting the uh, the new 74 series. So that was just a little bit of a, an overview on the, uh, the three versions available as well as a first time setup all the way through QUTS Hero uh, from a factory um, out of the box experience all the way through uh, to setting it up and, and ready to use the NAS as well. Um, if anybody has any questions or wants some more information please do leave it in the comment section down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot. Bye.